Hello there, welcome back to the channel. And this channel is Nerd World. I'm a huge nerd, and one thing I am very nerdy about is Star Trek. So, once again, as with many times before, we go into the deep dark of the vacuum of space to examine an alien species that are kind of interesting in Trek, in that they're quite often mentioned, and they're often mentioned in that no one knows F all about them. And what you do know only makes them more mysterious, and that would be the Breen. Before we get started, please like, share, subscribe, and comment down below what your theories are about the Breen, as I'm going to have to share some of mine, because to be honest, the Alpha Cannon on the Breen is pretty piss poor. But we'll share what we know and discuss it, shall we? With that said, let's get started on the Breen. The Breen Confederacy is an Alpha Quadrant power encountered by the United Federation of Planets at an undetermined point in the past whenever official contact, if official contact has ever really been made as communication between these two powers is sporadic. Now I should point out that the Breen are technically defined within the Federation by Starfleet as a territorial species. This is often confused with xenophobic, like the Tholians are more xenophobic. They don't like contact with other species. They try to limit their contact with other races and they intentionally go out of their way to avoid visual communications, audio communications if possible, and generally don't leave their, their own space unless they have to when they're randomly acting aggressively. This makes the Tholians particularly hard to predict. The Breen are territorial. This means that they, although they do not shy away from contact with other races, they trade with them frequently, they have many diplomatic and political connections with multiple other powers, they still retain a degree, or a strong degree, of autonomy and independence away from those races. With the exception of their one major foyer into intergalactic affairs when they would join the Dominion for some reason, again, no one knows why. The the belief is that it was based on the Breen being promised territorial gains from the Dominion, but as we know, the Changelings had no intention of honouring any agreement that they made with the Breen. They merely wanted the Breen to continue to fight and fight hard in the name of the Dominion to help them win the war. And once that was over, they'd decide whether or not they were going to honour or how much they were going to honour of the agreement they had made with the Breen. Other things that are weird about the Breen, so we'll cover what we know that are that's weird for the most part, and then we'll get into a few other more specifics of them. But some of the things we do know. Starfleet was able to destroy most of the Breen attack force, but by then most of the damage had been done. We must give the enemy credit to launch an attack on Starfleet headquarters. Even my people never attempted that. We've learned one thing about the Breen today, Captain. They're a race of warriors. That's about all we know. Our intelligence reports are sketchy at best. They were a type of refrigeration suit. This covers them from head to toe. It's a type of environmental suit. It is not body armor like people think. It is not weapons resistant in any particularly effective way. We quite clearly see that even Cardassian disruptors that are not the best quite easily take care of a Breen. It can also be vaporized by Dominion weaponry. It's, it's as far as we can tell, not true armor. It's probably more like a sort of souped-up spacesuit, which Starfleet would wear when in going into hazardous environments like space or a Y-class environment of a planet or something like that. But these are the Breen equivalent. This refrigeration suit obviously does what it says on the tin. It cools the inside down of the suit for the wearer to allow them to maneuver in environments that would otherwise be perhaps too warm for them. Again, the polar opposite, quite literally, and no pun intended that time, of the Tholians, who we know prefer extremely hot environments. The Breen, like their temperature, is icy. And this begs a lot of questions. The Dominion noted, Upon visiting the Breen homeworld, it was a very comfortable planet where the Vorta and the Jem'Hadar could move around without having to wear thermal gear. So why the Breen choose to wear refrigeration suits is a true mystery, as if on their own homeworld, 
they would also still need to wear them. Now, there are explanations which we can surmise from this, which we'll discuss now. And these are theories more than and speculations. Because we see that Wayun and Damar were speculating and wondering why the Breen wore these refrigeration suits in the first place. One theory is quite simply that the planet that the Vorta went to was not the Breen homeworld. It was simply an outpost or perhaps a colony of some description on a planet that was more M-class and the Breen stayed perhaps up in the icy poles of the planet and didn't bother to live in the more temperate, warmer climates toward, further towards the equator. Another possibility, which is probably just as likely as anything, is another theory. The Breen are known as the Breen Confederacy, which is an interesting name for a race that's so territorial and although, again, they get along with others, there's no evidence they have really strong alliances with anyone. Just general, normal, day-to-day -day interactions, even with the Federation to a degree. This implies the Breen are not a species. But the word Breen could be a reference to a conglomerate, the name of their government. There is a theory that there are, similar to the Dominion or the Federation, the Breen Confederacy is actually made up of several different species that all happen to be humanoid and then were the refrigeration suits. But that doesn't really sit well with me just because that would imply that every species that is in the Confederacy needs that extreme cold environment, but it could be an explanation as to why the planet they visited was quite temperate. It could be that one species of this alliance is an ice-dwelling race and they are the ones that everyone always meets wearing those refrigeration suits and the other races don't leave their territory or that they're all conquered by them or something like that. It, it's, it's all possible. It's, and it could be anything. Now, I did come across a theory, and I, I'll, I cannot remember, because it's not my own, but I really did like this one. I think it makes a lot of sense. No one knows what a Breen looks like under their suit, but for some reason, Starfleet Medical, particularly Dr. Bashir, does note certain biological things about the Breen. For example, he notes that the Breen don't have blood. Now, this is probably an observation made by Starfleet more than anything else. When a Breen has been shot or injured, which will have happened because Starfleet has had multiple armed engagements with the Breen, both in space and on the ground. So they would have seen injured Breen, and they probably wouldn't have seen them bleed. This implies the Breen don't have blood, but that might not necessarily be true either. There is a theory that the reason the Breen wear a refrigeration suit is that obviously they require a deep, cold environment in order to survive. Now, most species encountered by the Federation, particularly humanoids, are carbon based, and the Breen theoretically, might not be carbon-based. Or if they are carbon-based, there are other elements going on in there. In other words, basically, they're more... Um, they're, the main component of their body isn't water. It could be some other element which requires a deep cold to remain in a liquid state. We see similar things on some of Jupiter's moons, which have oceans of a chemical that are really i'm going to look it up and put it on the screen because i can't remember what it is off the top of my head and basically it's liquid at deep cold temperatures like mercury can be at liquid at room temperature so basically the theory is the breen are made primarily of this material not water so without the refrigeration suit once it is breached the breen inside literally evaporates they burn up because what is a comfortable temperature to a human say would be the equivalent of a human trying to set foot on the surface of Venus. We'd be baked instantly, crushed and burnt up alive. So to the Breen, our environment is a fiery hell. It is death incarnate. It is such an alien, so they require that environment. But that doesn't explain when the Vorta visit their homeworld, it's temperate. So again, maybe that wasn't their homeworld. But it is a theory that I quite like. But all these things, again, they raise as many questions as they answer. If the Breen are like that, why would they ever colonize an M-class world? Why wouldn't they colonize a world more like Neptune? Or at least in terms of that. Or why wouldn't they somehow terraform it to make it more like their homeworld? A planet like Andoria might be more suitable to them. So why colonize an Earth-like planet in the first place? It could be for mineral or industrial purposes. Fine. I accept that. 
It also explains why the Breen utilize slave labor we see, we see on planets that are desert worlds, and the Breen themselves only retain a small presence there. When they had Cardassian and Bajoran slaves working in a mine for them, where Tora Zial was rescued by her father Goldacott and Kieran Reese. And again, we'll get to those two characters, because they're quite important in the Breen story in a moment. We can assume they did that because they themselves don't like those hot environments. So they probably had like a cold storage unit somewhere deep in that mine that they like to hang out. And they only went out when they had to. It could be very taxing on their suits. I mean, that planet plus being on the ground, it would have got baking hot. It would have been taxing on their suits, especially if they were then trying to do physical work, like work in a mine. It might have been incredibly difficult and probably very hazardous for the Breen because the slightest rock fall or anything that happened in that mine that could damage their suit would mean literal instant death. Because even a human can survive in the vacuum of space for a while, even in deep cold environments we can survive for a little bit, but clearly the Breen cannot survive for more than a few seconds with exposure to our atmosphere. So that gets us to, again, Dukat and Kiro coming to this story now. They are the only two individuals we know for a fact, 100% certainty, that they have removed the armor from a Breen and then worn it themselves in order to infiltrate first the aforementioned Breen slave colony and then later the, the Dominion outpost on Cardassia. Colonel Kira in that instance and Dukat in the former. So we know they took their armor, but they've never mentioned what they saw. They don't tell anyone what the Breen looked like. Now, I doubt they were keeping it a secret. But those encounter suits, to me, look a lot more like space suits, because they look like sort of... Although they look leathery, they're definitely... They don't look like they have a zipper on them anywhere. So how the hell did they get the Breen out? Did they melt? That's my, th my thought on it. If the Breen couldn't... I mean, Cardassia is a warm planet, because we know Cardassians like the heat. And... As well, that mine was on a desert world. Both worlds very hot. The Breen could, if they really were made of a, a chemical that was only stable at deep cold environments, those extreme temperatures would have instantly vaporized them. They might not have existed for long enough for them to be seen. It's also possible whatever weapon they used to incapacitate them, because it breached the suit. It caused a breach, it exposed the internals to the atmosphere, the suit couldn't compensate, and the Breen then died, and then their body evaporated. It is possible. And at most, maybe they just have to pull the skeletal remains out, if even that. But again, they never mention it, and still no one knows what they look like, and yet Dukat and Kira have both seen one. Both of whom, at least at the time, Dukat in Dukat's case, was still working with the Federation. He, he hadn't turned into the leader of Cardassia yet and the enemy of the Alpha Quadrant. But even if he wasn't willing to like, even make a, a passing comment to someone about what a Breen looked like, Kira certainly would have done. It would have come up in conversation, if nothing else. You can imagine Sisko, and particularly Dr. Bashir, would have been very interested to know any anatomical information that she had learned. It's also reasonable to assume that dead bodies would be collected on battlefields. And yet, still no one knows. The Dominion had one in their custody, we saw in the Gamma Quadrant. They may have had others, but assume they only had the one. The Dominion would have wanted to learn as much as they can about the Breen. And they would have tried to remove that suit at some point. Now, assuming the Dominion realized that a Breen couldn't exist at normal temperature, they'd have simply done it in a cold room and used holograms to do the analysis or something. There are many... See what I mean? This, you can go down a rabbit hole with this and it's just an endless twist and turns. And yet somehow the Breen managed to keep it completely mysterious as to what they actually look like. They also use voice modulators in their suits that specifically counter the working effects of universal translators that aren't specially programmed to handle it. Basically, they don't even want you to know what their language sounds like, and their written language is known to be very complex. So the Breen do as much as they can to keep this air of mystery about themselves. Other things we know about the Breen superficially... We know that they favor biomechanical technology. Most Breen ships, as identified by Commander Tuvok, are 
biomechanical vessels. He makes this observation in the Delta Quadrant when comparing a vessel of species 8472 to one of the Breen, which are also known to be biomechanical. But yet, when they entered the Dominion War, they did not deploy their bioships against the Allies. They deployed an entirely new model of warship that they had been able to produce in extraordinarily large numbers for a newly built starship based on a technology that they don't widely use, because clearly if they favoured biotech, their shipyards, their whole industry supporting their navy would have been geared towards production of materials and whatever for the growth or construction of said bioships. But yet they emerged with these advanced technological wonders that were mechanically based, based on ores and minerals and metals, not biology. And they never weren't seen to use them. Had they abandoned them? Did they write it off as a bad experiment? Had the Federation simply encountered an experimental Breen ship and assumed that all of them were bioships? Was part of their fleet biological? Was this a reflection of the fact that perhaps the Breen were made of multiple races and one of them happened to use bioships and others didn't? There's simply no way to know because the Breen are weird. It's also possible that they use a combined fleet, but why they would go out of their way to make to create two massive supporting industries. Now, logistically speaking, just look at real-world logistics of operating any naval force. You need factories and industries, a huge civilian, government, and other industrial workforce to back up the production of war materials. Just the, the very metals that, say, an American naval aircraft carrier is made from have to be made by somebody. Someone's got to make the metal. Someone has to mine it, refine it, quality test it. It has to be then shaped and all the rest and everything else. So you've got an industry just geared to that. But then imagine you also had ships made of biomechanical technology. So you'd have to have an alongside war industry supporting both engineering types. As I said, it's weird. The Breen are just weird. Why they would do that? It seems like a depletion of resources to decentralize and defocus their industry like that. It would mean that technology from one vessel was not interchangeable with another, whereas it would actually, it's actually very beneficial, like Starfleet does, to have very modular ships. You can literally pluck components from an Excelsior, and if you need to, plug them into an Intrepid, because they use a lot of the ba same base technology. The computer systems, the power conduits, etc., etc. I mean, things like the warp core and other technologies, yes, those are probably specific ship specific. But other secondary technology about the ship, the replicators, the transporters, the power conduits, the isolinear processors, bioneural gel packs, uh, transporter systems, holodeck systems, grav gravity plating. All that stuff, the lighting even, even just simple things like the lights, the very materials that the hull is made from, carpets, everything is interchangeable. They all look the same. They're all going to be made at the same starbase. So when they order carpet for a ship, it comes probably from the same manufacturers because it's a big roll of carpet and it's used on 50 different ships. So why would you have two? Co but then you've got a complete other industry that needs a complete other set of engineering principles, a whole different workforce, a whole different set of engineering, requires different training, different areas of expertise, and a whole new set of spare parts. It doesn't make sense. So why'd the Breen do it? Who knows? Because nobody fucking knows. Because the Breen are weird. And pretty much through Alpha Cannon, that's all we know about them. That literally is it. There's only odd bits, and I don't use beta cannon, so I'm not using Star Trek Online or anything else for reference sake. We do know as sort of less tangible things, which is more inductive reasoning, observed by the Klingons. The, Kl the Klingons observe that the Breen are a race of warriors. They know this about them. A hundred years ago, the Klingons sent a fleet in the 23rd century into Breen space to try to conquer them, they never heard from any of the ships again. They never tried that. They never tried an invasion. No Klingons survived that invasion. Every ship and every soldier aboard those ships was killed. And all contact lost, no one heard from again. If there were prisoners, the Breen never returned them. So, that happened. And then there was the Breen attack on Earth. Something noted that the Klingons had even never attempted. The Breen were able to inflict considerable damage on Starfleet Command and probably several of the secondary bases. 
Most of their ships were destroyed before they reached Earth, and very likely very few, if any, of their ships escaped the attack. Because an attack on the heart of the Federation, particularly a militarized Federation at this point, was suicide. But yet they still did it. And these aren't the Jem Hadar who are bred for war and will sacrifice their lives at the drop of a hat. This is the Breen, who had far less investment. This was more of a psychological attack than anything. But the fact remains, they were willing to do it. And as the Klingons observed, this may, they, should, they proved that they were warriors. They also proved another ability observed by Starfleet, that they could mobilize a very big fleet and deploy it very quickly, which was, again, something the Breen weren't known to be able to do. Because they were such a territory people, most of the bulk of the fleet always stayed within its borders. So power projection was more of an issue. One of the reasons the Breen weren't a significant deep space power is a lack of political and industrial connections beyond their borders. They have no out very few outposts and bases far out into deep space. They've got some, but they're nowhere like the Federation or the Romulans or the Klingons. They also don't have the logistical supply network to sustain a fleet out in deep space. As again, because they don't have deep space colonies. And the few outposts we ever learn about are all small, tiny little outposts. Not big complexes with, like big Federation star bases where you can operate a fleet from. So the Breen can't maintain a fleet in deep space for long. Now, this was basically fixed by their alliance with the Dominion. They were able to send ships to Cardassian space and operate from pre-existing Dominion and Cardassian bases. This fixed that problem. But the thing that shocked everyone was the fact that the Breen were able to do this in the first place. The fact that they were able to deploy such a large fleet over such a long distance. Not that they were able to sustain it out there, because obviously that was with help from the Dominion. But the fact they could send them in the first place. It caught everyone off guard. No one expected it. They'd also previously signed a non-aggression pact with the Dominion, so kind of everyone had turned their back on them. But there was an old Romulan saying observed. My people have a saying. Never turn your back on a brain. The Romulans, being a fairly shadowy race themselves, have very likely collected more data on the Breen than the Federation or the Klingons have managed to do. It's also likely that they have a better and stronger political alliance with them and maybe have learned a little bit more in their dealings with them. Hence this. They, they also possibly had a previous alliance with them, because who knows, the two races are both kind of secretive. In many ways, the Romulans and the Breen are fairly similar. The Romulans are also a territorial and secretive people, but they're not xenophobic like the Tholians. They're not isolationists, at least not all the time. Romulans are complex as well. But anyway, that's going to bring me to the end of this video. The Breen were a technologically advanced spacefaring civilization that were at least as old as the Federation, probably older. They had weapons and technology that was comparable to that of Starfleet, but had made certain advances in weapons technology, such as the energy dampening weapon. However, this was not such a magnificent advancement in their technology. It was only one thing that once they figured out how to counter it, made it neutralized the problem. But Breen warships were fast, maneuverable, and still very deadly, and the Breen were a race of warriors. And superficially, on the surface, that's all we really know about them. We know that they had leaders called Thoughts, such as Thought Paran, that was the head of the Breen at one point during the Dominion War, but he was then replaced. We think it was a he anyway, we're not sure. And other than that, we're at the end of this video because there isn't much more Alpha Canon, and as I said before, I don't want to use Beta Canon. This video has also dragged on a stupidly long time. I expect it to be half this long. I've rambled again. So, with that said, we're at the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.